fossils for kids. Have you ever been playing in your backyard and tripped over a rock buried in the dirt? And then, when you went to pull that rock up, you found the impression of the body of an ancient animal embedded in it? If you have, then you're among the lucky few who've discovered a fossil. A fossil is defined as the remains or impression of a prehistoric organism preserved in petrified form. As you know, if you've ever seen a fossil, they're really cool to look at, almost like works of art. But they're also very useful to scientists who use them to learn about how animals and plants lived a long time ago, about how the earth has evolved, and about how living matter has changed over time. You can learn a lot from a fossil. So how do you think fossils are formed? Do they just magically appear? Well, not quite. A fossil is actually created when a plant or animal that died millions of years ago leaves behind a skeleton, bones, or some other organic matter. When these bones or organic materials disintegrate or fall apart over a long time, they sometimes get preserved in a rock or petrified into a hard substance. When they do get preserved, they last a lot longer, allowing people to find impressions of them in rock or stone way after the plant or animal lived. We call these preserved remains fossils, and scientists use them to figure out what life was like way before any of us existed. Scientists that study and search for fossils are called paleontologists, paleo being an ancient Greek word meaning prehistoric. Paleontologists specialize in studying ancient life through fossil remains. Now there's a cool job! How'd you like to spend your day looking for bones and old remains and then figuring out what animal they came from? When we think of fossils, we often conjure up images of dinosaur bones. Of course, finding dinosaur fossils are among the most exciting discoveries that any paleontologist can make. But fossils can come from any animal or plant that lived a long time ago. Fossils have been found on every continent on Earth and have been unearthed in mountains, rivers, oceans, valleys, ice, rocks, and stones. A lot of the fossils that are found come from animals and plants that are extinct, which means they no longer exist on Earth. So sometimes finding fossils and studying them is the only way for scientists to determine what a specific animal or plant might have looked like. See this fossil? Based on what you see, what do you think this animal might have looked like? How about this one? It's pretty cool the way scientists can use old remains, such as fossils, to determine what an organism was like. But if you ask any paleontologist, they'll tell you it's not easy finding fossils, and a vast majority of the plants and animals that lived a long time ago haven't left any fossils behind at all. Part of the fun of looking for fossils is the moment of excitement when you actually find one. In a rock, or deep in the ice, or underwater somewhere. So just what do paleontologists look for when they search for fossils? How do they know they've found one? Well, there are three main types of fossils. The first kind of fossil is made from the remains of an organism or the imprints that it leaves behind. For example, when animals die, they leave behind parts of their bodies like bones and teeth, which have minerals in them. When the remains get buried in the mud and other sediments, these bones and teeth don't rot as quickly as other body parts and can be found millions of years later. Body parts can also undergo chemical changes over the years that preserve them. This process is called fossilization. What happens is, as bones and teeth and other parts start to rot or decay, water-carrying minerals can seep into the cracks. These minerals then harden, which makes it so the bones and teeth don't decay any further. Basically, Nature has its own way of preserving animals and plants from millions of years ago, which allows us to find and study them today. Another type of fossil is called a trace fossil. Trace fossils are not body parts that are preserved, 
but instead are things left behind by an animal when it was alive. Check out these trace fossils. This was made by the footprints left behind by an animal that walked the earth millions of years ago. Fossilized footprints are useful to scientists who are curious about the speed, stride, or shape of the foot of an animal, or how many feet it had, or whether it traveled alone or in herds, or whether it wore Nike or Adidas. Okay, we made up that last part, but still, finding old, hardened footprints is really cool. Imagine if you took a walk in the mud somewhere, and the footprints you left behind were discovered by scientists 500 million years from now. They might use your footprints to determine that you walked on two feet, that you wore a size six shoe, and that you always walked next to your best friend, your dog. Another type of trace fossil is animal waste, or poop, preserved over millions of years. When ancient poop becomes fossilized, it can help scientists figure out what that animal ate, where it got its food from, and whether there were foods that made that animal sick. You know what they say, you can learn a lot from fossilized poop. Yet another type of trace fossil that has been found by scientists are preserved animal eggs. Some eggs that have been found are as small as three inches and others are as big as almost two feet. These eggs are useful for paleontologists to help them determine what kind of animal they came from and even what something like a baby dinosaur might have looked like. One of the more fascinating of all kinds of fossils are mummified animals. Mummification occurs when the soft tissue, such as organs and skin from an animal, becomes dried and gets preserved over a long time. Mummified animals are most commonly found in the driest parts of the world, like deserts or arid regions, because when there is less rain to break down the body parts, they last much, much longer. While it's less common to find these types of fossils, they can offer a treasure trove of information about what animals looked like and how they lived. And also, let's face it, mummies are just cool. Believe it or not, even mummified people have been found. Utsi the Iceman is a mummified human who lived over 5,000 years ago and was found in 1991, almost entirely preserved. Studying Utsi's body, and the items that he was buried with allow scientists to better understand the kinds of stuff Otsi was into and how he lived. Okay, so now that you know what fossils are, how do scientists go about finding them? Fossils come in many different colors and take many different forms, depending on where they're found. Most fossils are found in sedimentary rock layers. Sedimentary rock is a type of rock that is formed from layers of sediment, like sand and mud, along with small pieces of larger rock. Over millions of years, remains of animals can get trapped in these layers of rock. Over time, more and more layers pile on top of these remains, thus preserving them forever. When a fossil is formed, it becomes heavier than the original organism from which it came. For example, because it's now made from mineral and rock material, a fossil of a leaf will weigh much more than the original leaf itself. While it may have the same shape of the leaf, it can actually be much thicker or be a different color than the original leaf. Because now, hardened minerals have taken the place of the organic material. Think about what would happen to a house fern if it died and were then buried under layers of rock for millions of years. The fossil that it would leave behind might take the shape of the fern, but would weigh more, and it definitely wouldn't be green anymore. Fossilized fern, anyone? When you think about it, one of the best ways to make a fossil is in ice. If you freeze something soon after it dies, and then keep it frozen for years and years, it will be preserved exactly how it was. This is what happened with Otsi, the ice man. He was found preserved in ice thousands of years after he lived. Some of the most common fossils found in ice are woolly mammoths and rhinos, big animals that lived in places that were once totally covered in ice. So, there you have it. You've just learned some rock-solid information about fossils. To sum up, 
Fossils are formed in a bunch of ways, but the most common is when, over many, many years, minerals fill in the empty spaces of plants and animals that are no longer alive. We hope that you now have this information fossilized in your brain, so you can go on your own search for fossils in your backyard. Happy hunting! Hope you had fun learning with us. Visit us at learnbright.org for thousands of free resources and turnkey solutions for teachers and homeschoolers.